Welcome friends, it's Miss Gisa, and today we're going to read a story called Tiggy and the Lost Island, written by Sherry Fulcher and illustrated by Ishmael Bojander. Tiggy, the coolest koala around, looked out over the forest of eucalyptus trees. It was early and his friends were still asleep. What a beautiful morning, he said to himself, far too good to be sleeping the day away. He decided to go to the beach to catch some waves before breakfast. Tiggy put on his favorite board shorts, grabbed his favorite surfboard, and strolled down to the beach. The waves looked perfect. There were lots of other surfers out on the break. He managed to catch several beautiful waves, or as Tiggy called them, curls. Dude, he cried out in delight as he rode one. These are totally gnarly. He was having so much fun, he didn't realize the currents had changed. The surf and swells grew bigger, and there were lots of riptides, which could get quite dangerous. Nearly all the other surfers had gone ashore already, but Tiggy decided to surf one more wave before heading in. He watched the next wave, a huge one, ready to hop up to standing position to ride it. However, he was most definitely not ready for what happened next. What seemed like a huge wave became a completely massive one that rose higher and higher. Dude, this is not good, not good at all, he cried out, eyes as wide as saucers. He tried to quickly paddle back to shore, but it was too late. The ginormous wave knocked him right off his board. Snap! The rope that connected him to his board broke and was instantly gone, pulled underwater and away from Tiggy. He swallowed a mouthful of water and he tried to find his way to the surface for air. But poor Tiggy was flipping every which way underwater, like he was a piece of clothing tumbling dry in a wild spin. Then the fierce current pulled him even further down and dragged him along the ocean floor. As this happened, Tiggy grew dizzy and panicked. Will this wave ever let go of me? He thought in despair. Will I never make it back to the surface again? Is this the end? Just when Tiggy felt as though he couldn't breathe any longer, something grabbed hold of his hand. Whatever it was, pulled him into an underwater cave that was protected from the raging ocean. The surfing koala could finally get some air, though at first he coughed, gasped, and spat out a lot of water. Once he got a nice deep breath of air, he looked around at the cave. Where in all the ocean am I? What just happened? He muttered aloud. He was still dazed and confused from the shock of it all, his vision blurry. To Tiggy's surprise, he heard a high voice that sounded like a bell squeak. Well, you're inside Golden Cave on Rainbow Island, and we're so glad you're alive. The koala rubbed his eyes and looked where the voice had come from. When his vision cleared, he couldn't believe what he saw standing in the cave with him. There was a scaly monster, a glittering unicorn, and a sweet, tiny fairy. He stared with his mouth open. They just smiled back. I, I, am I seeing things, he thought. Then the fairy said, sorry, you're still in shock, I'm sure, and we haven't even introduced ourselves. I'm Daisy Bell, a fairy. This is Fang, a monster. Though, don't worry, he's totally friendly. And this is... The unicorn finished Daisy's sentence with, I'm Senorita Sparklehooves. And to answer your other question, you got knocked off your surfboard by the gigantic waves. We're really happy. You're okay. We truly are, the monster Fang said. So what's your name? The koala blinked at all three of them for a moment, still trying to believe what he was seeing. Then he gave a small smile and said, I'm Tiggy, er, nice to meet all of you. And thanks for saving me. I thought I was a goner. Um, so you said we're in Golden Cave on Rainbow Island? That's right, said Daisy Bell. It's the most beautiful mystical island in the world. Well, at least it used to be, said Senorita Sparklehooves, rolling her eyes. What do you mean? And how come I've never heard of Rainbow Island, even though I've lived near here all my life? asked Tiggy. We'll explain everything, said Daisy. 
First, I'll make you a eucalyptus smoothie so you can recover from your ordeal. In minutes, Daisy had made the smoothie and Tiggy had happily drank over half already. He felt much better. Then the four of them sat in a circle on soft moss that strangely grew in parts of the cave floor. Sparkle began. The reason you've never heard of or seen Rainbow Island is that it used to be magically invisible to the rest of the world. We lived in perfect peace and harmony. Daisy then said, all my fairy friends had the loveliest, most unique little houses all over the island with special handmade decorations and beautiful gardens. We'd visit each other for lemonade or mini donuts. Everyone was welcome and kind. Whoa, sounds awesome, said Tiggy. The unicorn nodded and went on. My friends and I had such fun. There were hundreds of us unicorns and we loved to gallop through fields of flowers in every color you could imagine. Everything was so pretty and the garden smelled so sweet. Sometimes we'd take the fairies for a ride and scatter magic sparkles wherever we went. My monster friends and I would wander the islands doing silly things, added Fang. We'd make everybody laugh with funny faces, jokes, and pranks. Nothing mean, though. Nobody feared us. They just laughed and laughed until they cried. We all did. Dude, it all sounds incredible, Tiggy said with a big smile as he imagined it all. So, well, what happened? It was a little fairy who answered, mouth turned down. One day, we don't know how they found us, but the pirate dogs came. They must have tracked our scent. Whoa, dude, er, and dudettes. Pirate dogs don't sound good. Not at all, exclaimed Tiggy. Not at all, agreed Daisy Bell. Captain Rusty Sword, his first mate, Sid Bad Breath, and their whole stinky crew came on their big ship, the wooden keel, they robbed us all of all our prized possessions and destroyed our houses, gardens, and everything. They took all our rainbow-colored fruits and vegetables, so we had nothing left to eat. They even took our special jewels. Special jewels? asked Tiggy. Were they magical or something? I'll take it from here, said Sparkle. In the middle of the island, hidden in a statue, there were three jewels. And yes, they were magical. These jewels were the source of the magic that kept Rainbow Island afloat and kept the island as well as all its inhabitants invisible to outsiders. When they took the jewels, the magic faded and Rainbow Island sunk to the bottom of the ocean. That's horrible, said Tiggy. It was, Fang agreed. And to add to that, our little island got caught up in a riptide which pushed us into this cave, the very one we're in right now. Down here, we don't get much sunlight, so we can't grow food. We need to survive. I'm afraid we won't last much longer. The cave got silent as everyone grew somber, staring down sadly at the ground. Then Tiggy said, guys, this is truly terrible. I'm sorry. Where did everyone go? Are you three the only ones left from the island? We're not the only ones left, Daisy answered, but we're the only ones here in the cave. Some of the fairies thought it was too cold here, so they made homes in random gardens on the mainland. There, they can enjoy the sun and warmth and have plenty of food. Fang added, the monsters went to live under the beds and in the closets of children who live nearby. They were hoping to make friends with the children, but some of them were scared instead. This made the moms and dads upset, so they tried to chase the monsters away. We didn't want to scare them. We only wanted to make them laugh, like we used to do on Rainbow Island. Suddenly, the sparkly unicorn stood up and ran to another part of the cave. Tiggy, Daisy, and Fang all followed her. This part of the cave had a small but glittering aqua waterfall that led into a stream. Sparkle raised her front hooves up in the air, moving them in circular motions, then splashed them down in the stream. Whoa, what's going on here? The surfer koala wondered to himself. Then Senorita Sparkle Hooves turned and said, us unicorns need sun and space to run. Most of my friends left and I don't know where they ended up. I haven't seen them in forever. I miss them. Her angry and frustrated look now turned sad as her eyes began to fill with tears. Both Fang and Daisy were, went to hug her. Tiggy, feeling bad for her, but kind of awkward, patted Sparkle on the side of her neck to try to be comforting. Then he asked, um, why are you three still down here then? We can't bear to let Rainbow Island disappear forever, said Sparkle. 
We want to save it and restore it to its former beauty and glory. Then maybe our friends will come back. That would be so amazing. Both the fairy and friendly monster smiled and nodded in agreement. In that case, can I help? asked Tiggy. You would do that for us? Daisy asked. At the same time, Sparkle said, yes, please do help us. And Thing added, yes, we need all the help we can get. Tiggy grinned and answered Daisy's question. Of course I'd do that for you. All three of you saved my life. Now, where do we start? Thank you, Daisy said. And to start, we heard that Captain Rusty's sword's boat capsized in a big storm. The crew dog paddled ashore, but all of their loot, including our jewels, sunk to the bottom of the ocean. That's right, Thing continued. And even better, when we know where the wreck is, we can see them sparkle, but we can't get to them. Why not, asked Tiggy. This time Sparkle answered, because we can't swim and hold our breath underwater for that long. You know what though? The unicorn started to stare at Tiggy with a hopeful smile. You're a great sw surfer and swimmer. Maybe you can dive down and rescue our jewels. Before Tiggy could answer, Daisy's face lit up with a huge smile. Great idea, she exclaimed. Legend has it that once the three jewels are back in place on the statue, the island will rise to the ocean surface and will become invisible to humans once again. Then all of our friends can come back to the island and we can live happily ever after, like a fairy tale. Well then, dudes and dudettes, said Tiggy, giving a smile back to the three of them. I'll try my absolute very best to dive down and rescue the jewels. I'm good at diving as well as swimming, so I think I'll be able to do it. All three of Tiggy's new friends, the monster, unicorn, and fairy, cheered and gave him a big hug. Tiggy spent a surprisingly comfortable night on the moss floor of the mysterious golden cave. Early the next morning, Fang, Senorita, Sparkle Hooves, and Daisy Bell called on their fairy mermaid friend, Caroline. The mermaid had helped them locate the jewels before, but she was so tiny that she just couldn't lift or carry the magical gems herself. The beautiful tiny mermaid lifted her head from the stream in the cave and spoke to Tiggy. I hear you can help us get the jewels with your awesome diving and swimming skills, Tiggy. I can show you where the jewels are, but I need your help to carry them back up, okay? Uh, okay, we got this, Tig Tiggy said confidently, though he was a little nervous inside. With Caroline leading the way, the koala went to the cave's entrance, took a deep breath, and stood next to the wall of the ocean water that was magically kept outside the cave. Good luck, Tiggy, and thanks, Daisy called to him. He gave a thumbs up and said, thanks, surfs up, then dived through the wall of the water. He used his expert dive and swimming skills to follow Caroline to the ocean floor where the jewels were. It was a cool but spooky spot next to an old shipwrecked boat, but he only saw one jewel. That's strange, the mermaid said. All three were here last time, and now it's just the bright red one. Someone must have taken them. Tiggy, who could hear her underwater but couldn't speak since he was holding his breath, simply frowned. He then shrugged apologetically, took the red jewel, and swam back to the cave. Yay, you found them, Daisy cried in her tinkly bell voice. Thanks, Tiggy. And, oh, where are the other two jewels? Caroline answered. The red one was the only jewel there, but if Tiggy's up for it, I think we should go back and search inside their shipwreck too. I'm up for it, Tiggy said. I'll hold my breath for as long as I can to help search. Thanks, Tiggy, you're the best, Sparkle and Daisy said at once. Fang grinned his thanks as well. Tiggy gave a half smile, took a huge, deep breath and dove back through the wall. He and Caroline searched and searched both inside and outside the shipwreck, but they came back empty-handed. Sorry, said Tiggy with a frown when they were back on dry land. We looked everywhere, but no sign of the other two. Yeah, sorry guys, Caroline added. We looked very hard and now I must get back to my little baby mermaid son, Reef. Good luck and let me know if I can help more. With a wave, the mermaid swam back into the ocean. Fang sighed and said, I bet those pirate dogs took them. That wouldn't surprise me. Not one bit, said Sparkle. Oh, what do we do now? Asked Daisy Bell with a sad moan. Well, we won't give up, that's for sure, said Tiggy with determination. We must find the missing jewels, wherever they are, and get them back where they belong. Even if that means we've got to face those nasty pirate dogs. If they did take the gems, then we'll come up with a plan to outsmart them and get the jewels back. Don't worry, my friends.
Wow, you're that determined to help us? Daisy asked, looking hopeful. I am, the koala said with a nod, and we must start looking right away in case the pirates run off with the gems. You can ask everyone we know to help, sending messages to all our friends and anyone who might have information. Agreed, exclaimed Senor Dust Sparkle Hooves. As soon as we get the word out and pack up a few supplies, we should head out on our mission. Yes, indeed, Fagin cried. Yes, yes, Daisy Bell said with a huge smile now. We'll find those last two jewels and restore Rainbow Island no matter what. Gnarly, cried Tiggy with a fist pump to the air. And so Tiggy, the surfing koala, found himself on a wild new adventure with his magical new friends. To be continued. I hope you enjoyed that magical story. We need to find out what happens next. See you next time. Thank you for joining me today. Remember to like and subscribe to support our channel.